Now we're going to be learning the different properties of logarithms. Alright, so for any positive numbers m, n, and b, where b is not allowed to equal 1, the following properties apply. So we have the product property, which says that any time I have a log base b of some type of product m times n, now remember this could be two numbers, this could be two um, variables, this could be a variable and a number, we can split up that product with an addition sign. So we can change it from a product to a sum by splitting it up into two different log expressions. The quotient property says that anytime I have division of m and n where they're positive numbers or could be a variable, then I can split that division up using subtraction. Notice how we went from having one log to now two. So using these properties expands the logarithm. And then the power property says that any time I have a log base b of m to some n power, I'm allowed to bring that n right to the front of the log. Okay, So that n exponent comes out of the exponent position and comes to the front of the log. And I want you to notice for all of these, b is the same base. Okay, So whether we start with one expression and we expand to two, we keep the same b and it's important to make sure to rewrite that same b or whether we are starting with 2 and we're compressing it or shortening it into one logarithmic expression, we keep that same b. So now we're going to be condensing these two logarithmic expressions into one. So we want to rewrite it so we only have one log in our expression. Now we want to check to make sure, yes, we have the same bases. Now subtraction here means that I'm going to write these two as a quotient. So I'm going to have log base 4, so I'm going to keep my 4, and I'm going to take these two values and write them in a quotient. Now, of course, we can simplify this. And then, if we wanted to evaluate, which it doesn't say evaluate, so we wouldn't keep going. If we wanted to evaluate, we would say 4 to what power gives me 16, so this log would actually equal 2. Now, the instruction said leave in a log single logarithmic form, so this would be the answer. All right, this next one here has a couple more things going on. We have a 6 out front. We have a 5 out front. Now, remember, a number out front can go up into the exponent position. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. That's the first thing you want to do is always put things back into the exponent position. And we double check. We have a 2 and a 2, so my bases are the same. So I'm going to first rewrite this as log base 2 of x to the 6th power plus log base 2 of y to the 5th power. So first thing you want to always do is make sure you put your exponents back into um, their position. Now since I have addition, addition means I'm going to condense this down using multiplication. So I keep the same base and now I'm just going to take these two guys and multiply them and that's as far as I can go. So that is going to be my single logarithmic expression. So now we're going to expand. We want to write these as as many logarithmic expressions as we can. So we're going to kind of unfold the log using the properties. So looking at this first example, I have division here, which is going to mean separating them using subtraction, keeping the same base, the common base of 10. Okay, we don't have to write it. Now here I have multiplication, so I can go ahead and break those up using addition. And now we have unfolded or expanded this as much as possible. So this is going to be my final answer. And you could check your answer by using those same properties to um, put it back into one logarithmic expression. Now down here, again, I'm separated by division, so I'm going to go ahead and write that as a subtraction of the numerator and the denominator, making sure to rewrite the log both times. Now I am not done, right? And I also need to make sure you never leave out your bases, right? So carry that base with you whenever you expand. So now this exponent can hop down to the front. And that's as far as we can go. So that's going to be my final answer. Now the reason why this is handy is because 
as you can see here, this 4 was trapped inside the log. Now that we've expanded it, I can actually get to log of 4, and if I needed to, I could evaluate that in my calculator. And down here, this log base 9 of 729 was trapped inside of that log also. Now this is a numerical value that I could actually find the number that represents that logarithm. So here we go, the change of base formula. So the change of base formula allows me to take a log that has some base b, and now I can change it to whatever base I want. Okay, so this is the formula that will allow me, if I want to, to change it to the common log so that I can use my calculator. So remember before when we were evaluating logs, we had to sit there and do the expression and set it equal to x and then solve to try to figure out what x was to be able to evaluate the log. Now what this is going to let me do is use my calculator because I can change the base now to common log and so I can just plug it in my calculator. Now of course C can be any base you want so if you wanted a different base other than 10 you could also have that but for our purposes the majority of the time we're going to want to change it to base 10 so we can use our calculator. Alright so here we go. Let's rewrite these using the change of base formula. So we always write this guy on top, so log of 27 over log of 81. Okay, now it's not written, but my bases here are 10, right? Because I'm doing the common log. So now what I can do is I can go to my calculator and I can actually type in log of 27 divided by log of 81. Remember that's common log in your calculator, and I get 0.75. So I was able to find the value of the expression without actually doing um, an equation to find that value. Now remember, you want to put that whole thing in your calculator and then press enter. You don't want to round. You don't want to do log of 27, write it down, then log of 81, write it down, and then type those numbers back in and evaluate. You want to do it all in one step so you round at the end. All right, this next one, remember this guy goes on top. So this is log of 36 over log of 5. So evaluating that in my calculator, log of 36 divided by log of 5, I'm going to get, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to get 2.2. .2. Now this one up here came out nice and neat because I could have actually solved it 81 to what power gives me 27 and I can rewrite 81 and 27 with these same bases that's why this is such a nice number 0.75 is actually 3 fourths so that would have came out to a nice number but down here I had many decimals so this is a problem that I could not have solved using this method here alright so now it's your turn go ahead and use the properties to write this as one logarithm, expand this logarithm, and then use the change of base formula down here and round to the nearest tenth.